let's open All right, it. Reggie. Amen. Um, uh, in my notes, uh, it says, before I begin, I should glorify God. So that's the number one thing I want to do here right now. Father God, this is for your glory. Father God, I, I only live to please you. Lord, I ask you to speak through me here. I ask you to release your anointing in this room so that Jesus is glorified. Father, your word says in Acts 1-8, Lord, that I received power by the anointing when the Holy Spirit came upon me, and I believe that. Father, in 738, it says, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's the anointing. I'm asking for that right now, Lord God. Father, I believe that I am anointed, 2 Corinthians 1, 21. And I am anointed, 1 John 2, 20, and I am anointed. And I can do what the Bible says I can do. So right here, Lord God, I have to bring this word um, and that it would glorify you and that people would understand that we can do greater works because of the anointing, because Christ and the example of Christ. So, Father, I thank you for being here. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, for, uh, John 14, 12, 14, brothers and sisters, uh, I wanted to touch on that, and then I wanted to um, touch on some areas of uh, blessing your home, uh, looking uh, for uh, cursed objects, and praying over some cursed objects that you can't get rid of because um, you got a loved one that it, it belongs to. You can't just throw uh, someone's stuff away and cause problems, but you can break the curse off it, you know. And I wanted to touch uh, on blessing the land. So uh, I just want to list, uh, say hello to all the YouTubers. We love you. We thank you for um, joining us uh, on YouTube. And we ask you to click the share button so that more people can uh, uh, enjoy these videos. We just love you all. Amen. So uh, first, John, I mean, John 14, 12 to 14 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And 13, it says, And whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, um, a lot of that scripture, it, it, it a lot of people use it in many different ways. And the, what I wanted to focus on, on this scripture here, is the greater works than these shall he do. And I wanted to focus on, um, on knowing Christ. Because if you know what he did, the works he done, the character of him, the nature of him, it, and you will be able to do what he did. And as far as the greater works, as far as like reaching many people, because, you know, we, that, that's what it's about. It's about the Holy Spirit coming to you, reaching many people. But I wanted to go a little deeper into that. So let's look at the character and nature of Jesus Christ. I believe that the Lord God walked in the fruits of the Spirit. I believe the Lord God um, walked in uh, love, joy. He was love. He was joy. He was peace. He was long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. He, he walked in, in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Spirit, and the things that he did was out of love. So in Galatians 22, um, I'll look at 19. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now, this is um, the works of the flesh before it talks about the Spirit. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, uh, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, uh, lavishness, lavishness, um, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelry, revel, reveling, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And I want to tell you that when you're led by the Holy Ghost, you're not going to want to do any of that. You're, you're, it, the Holy Ghost will lead you and teach you to, um, to um, heaven, you know. And, um, but let's look at the 22. Uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, long-suffering, peace, uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things, there's no law. 
And in 20, uh, let me look real quick, 24, it says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Say in 20, and, no, it was 24. So 25, it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. And that to me was Jesus' example, walking in the spirit. Um, obedience to to his father in relationship. He taught us all. He taught us um, how 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 a child should should listen to his father and love his father and obey him. You know, that's like lots of times we have to get into that childlike faith. But even Jesus taught us that. Well, I think that's further. I'm talking a little bit ahead of myself. So it says Jesus walked by the Spirit of God, and he was led by his father. So. Here's a few things that happen when uh, when we walk in the Spirit of God. Now, again, I I'm, I don't I really don't believe that the greater things it has to do with the, the miracles and signs and wonders, but those those will follow those who believe. You'll you that'll happen if you're walking in the Spirit. You know, lots of times uh, the signs and wonders and the gifts are used as an evangelist tool. So it says um, here you find uh, a few miracles that I have listed and. Uh, of all the miracles Jesus recorded in the New Testament, uh, he healed the sick, he cast out uh, spirits, he performed other astounding miracles to show both his love. You know, like, again, I'm telling you this because we got to know the nature and character of Jesus. We got to know what he did. We got to get in our word. We got to have a relationship with him. And then we'll see, we'll see those greater works. Um, miracles uh, to show both his love for mankind and his power over creation, right? We, we have dominion, uh, uh, according to uh, Genesis, we have dominion too. He had dominion. Study these miracles of Jesus to build on your faith so you can receive and, and see um, the miracles uh, in your own walk as well. Jesus Christ has not changed. He's still doing miracles. He's still saving souls and he's still healing people through us, those who are led by the Spirit. I believe that the signs of wonders will follow them to believe, but I must point out John 14, uh, 12 to 14 is more than just the miracles because the signs of wonders to me are listed in Vanda's soul, like I just said, to reach those who are lost and, and to show people uh, Christ in you because everybody needs Jesus. Everyone does. Everyone needs a savior and salvation. That's what it's all about. But we still need to understand Jesus. We, need, we still need to understand uh, the greater works in this verse. So uh, the miracles of Jesus show us that God is real. And God uh, loves and God wants to heal and restore and give abundant life. Um, Jesus didn't only just uh, heal a few sick people. The Bible says many times that all who came to him were healed. Huge multitudes of people came to him, not only from Israel, but also from surrounding nations. And they brought uh, all their sick to Jesus to be healed. The Gospel of Matthew says several times that all were healed, not just a few. Many was touched by the healing and, and Jesus' love, his compassion, you know, that, that comes with the Holy Spirit, that love, compassion, and patience. Uh, he showed us joy, peace, um, and, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us not forget Jesus teaching the world of his faith, like the, like the relationship. Like I said, it's like a childlike faith. He taught that because he was a son. And he had fellowship and love, and he and he and he and he listened to his father. You know, we are sons too. You know, daughters, brides. We're ambassadors, saints. You know, um, and we and we need to have that type of relationship with the, with the father. Okay, and touch, healing, love, kindness. Okay, thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, he did only what the father showed him. He trusted the father. And he gave us the greatest example of how to have intimacy and relationship with the Father. See, that's a great thing, too. 
And you can have a greater relationship because he's going to the cross. He's talking to his disciples. He's going to the cross. And the Holy Spirit's going to come. Jesus is going to come in to us. Okay? We're going to be reconciled because of where he's going. He knows what's about to happen. Amen. They brought to him all who were ill. Those suffering from various diseases. Uh, pains, um, people who were demon possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Matthew four twenty four says it. the The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. Matthew twenty one fourteen. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, uh, uh, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and they laid. They laid them at his feet and he healed them. Matthew 15, 30. A large crowd followed him and he healed all who were ill. Go Jesus, right? The miracles of Jesus were more than just healing the sick. Besides healing the sick, Jesus Christ did many more miracles, like turning huge amounts of water into wine of the highest quality. Walking over rough water during a storm. Raising several people from the dead. Some uh, had been dead for, for days. Multiplying an, um, a small amount of food into an abundance for many thousands of very hungry people and so on. The gospel records at least 37 detailed miracles of Jesus. However, the apostle John shocks us by saying that the world would be too small if they had tried to record all Jesus Christ had said and done. So what has been written down is only a small portion of the miracles of Jesus and the things he did. He had done far more. John 21, 25 says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them was written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written in. Amen. This shows us how absolutely amazing Jesus Christ really is. He is so much more than all we can imagine. He came as a bright light in this deep darkness of the world and touched tens and thousands of people with the life-saving power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't need the internet, social media to gather a crowd. The miracles of Jesus were so extremely powerful and so amazingly abundant that the news spread like wildfire. All thought the land, all through the land and far abroad. I'm going to share some miracles to show you his love and through him how the Holy Spirit works. The greater works happens and souls are saved through the works of Jesus. I have them written down here on another device. Um, one to seven, it says, I'm not going to do the scriptures. Uh, Jesus turns water into wine. That would be the first one. Jesus heals uh, an, an official son. Jesus drives out evil spirit. Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. Jesus uh, heals many sick at, at evening. Um, first miraculous catch of a fish. Uh, Jesus cleanses a man with leprosy. Um, you got seven and uh, eight to 15. You know, Jesus heals a centurion servant. Jesus heals a paralytic. Jesus heals uh, uh, a man's withered hand. Jesus raises a widow's son in Nain. Uh, Jesus calms a storm. Jesus casts out demon, cast demons into a herd of pigs. Jesus heals a woman in the crowd, and Jesus raises Jairus' daughter to life. Jesus heals two blind men. Jesus uh, heals a man unable to speak. Jesus heals an invalid in Bethsaida. Jesus feeds 5,000. Jesus walks on water. Jesus heals many sick in Genesaret. Jesus heals a gentle uh, woman's uh, Jesus healed a Gentile woman, um, uh, possessed daughter. 
Jesus heals deaf and dumb man. He feeds 4,000. Jesus done that. Jesus heals a blind man in Bethsaida. He, he, Jesus heals a man born blind. Jesus heals a boy with a demon. Miraculous temple tax in, in a fish's mouth. Jesus heals a blind mute uh, with demons. Jesus heals a crippled woman. And it goes on and on. I mean, God is so amazing. God is so wonderful. Jesus is so wonderful. And he lives in us. He went to the cross, rose again, and now because the power of the Holy Spirit, he is in us. And he's still the same. Sometimes we just got to step back and let Jesus do his thing. What he does, what he's been doing. The miracles of Jesus are an example for us. Jesus didn't only ooh, man, perform miracles to show that he is God, but also to set an example for us. He healed the sick in order to break the chain of suffering over people's lives and bring an abundant life to them. His mission to bring healing and restoration to mankind continues today. He gave the clear instruction to all who believe in him to heal the sick, cast out demons, and raise the dead. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. Luke 10, 9. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I go, I'm going to the Father, John 14, 12. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you, John 21, 20. The miracles of Jesus is the hallmark of a true servant of Jesus Christ. You will come across these miracles. If you are led by the Spirit, they will follow you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's why the Apostle Paul said that he was a true apostle because the Lord did miracles through him. I persevered in demonstrating among you the marks of a true apostle, including signs and wonders and miracles, 2 Corinthians 12, 1, 12, 12. Of course, there, there are also uh, false signs and wonders. And Jesus did warn us about that. The wolves in sheep clothing. But this doesn't mean that all signs and wonders are miracles of a demon. Just let the Holy Spirit lead you, you know. So we know all that Jesus did was for us to learn who he is, accept him, believe in him, and the Father, the Holy Spirit. Once we understand that, then we can understand the works, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit grew from, from Jesus. The fruit of the Holy, the Holy Spirit's fruit grew from Jesus to the disciples and so on. After the cross, it changed everything. Again, Jesus Christ says in John 14, 12, Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works. You know, with, with today's times, with technology, man, you can, you can put a gospel track on your Facebook thing. You got 2,000 people right there. Boom, they all read it, and you're winning souls. And you can go on and share that and share that. And, and you can make a video now and just preach on it and reach people. If the Spirit is leading you and the Holy Spirit is speaking through you, you can do miracles by winning more souls than ever. Than ever, you know. Jesus was a great example and he lives in us now. We just got to step back, die to ourselves, and let Jesus' self, Jesus' nature, Jesus' character, his love flow from us. Let the Holy Spirit teach us how to do that. Let the Holy Spirit teach us how to have a relationship with the Lord because we are now reconciled. This scripture, John 14, 12, Greater works than these shall you do because I go unto the Father. This scripture has been greatly misunderstood by many people. People cannot understand 
uh, uh, why Jesus Christ would be saying this, doing greater things than he did. It doesn't make any sense. Actually, the scripture is very easy to understand if you break it down. Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is like saying, truly, truly, I tell you. He that believeth on me, the works that I, that I shall do, he'll do also. A Christian who believes in Jesus Christ will do the same type of things that Jesus did. Preaching the gospel, teaching people, praying for the sick. You know, um, signs and wonders and miracles happen around those who are truly saved and Holy Spirit filled. Mark 16, 17, 20. And these, shy shall these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. And confirming the word with signs following. Amen. And greater works than these shall he do. Here's a big misunderstanding sometimes. Jesus Christ is not saying that we will do the things better than him. No one, no one could do that. And nothing has uh, done, and nothing has done works that are better than jesus christ this is not what he's saying by using the greater here he's saying greater not as better than my works but rather greater numbers for example jesus christ once preached to a crowd of five thousand that um that was a big deal back then now some two thousand years later there are wonderful Christian uh, brothers and, uh, and preachers who are um, holding uh, crusades that reach into the millions in just a couple of days. That does not mean that uh, a preacher is doing greater than Jesus in a sense of better, no. But in a sense of reaching more people, greater numbers. Because you know, this, the, the disciples... When they first got the Holy Spirit, it was like, what, 3,000 right there instantly uh, when, when Peter preached. We also must understand that even when a Christian a preacher does ministry work in the ways that are greater than Jesus Christ was on earth, the works that this preacher is doing is still the works of Jesus because Jesus lives in us as saved, Holy Ghost filled as saved Holy Ghost, spirit-filled Christians, Jesus Christ is still doing his work. Only now through his servant. Without Jesus Christ, a Christian preacher would be unable to do anything for the kingdom of God. It is Christ Jesus who empowers us to minister, to pray, to preach, to touch lives, to win souls. And when we, when we bring uh, the whole, when we come with the Holy Spirit as ambassadors in the name of Jesus Christ, all is possible because it's not us. Because I go into the Father. Jesus Christ has gone to his Father in heaven to prepare a future for Christians. This is some comforting words. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. That's some encouraging word. That's love right there. We receive him and be filled with the Holy Spirit and be led by the spirit of truth. Then the fruits are through us. The nature of Jesus, uh, again, uh, joy, peace, love, the fruits of the Spirit, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. You know, that's, 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 that's what we're spreading. Love, the Holy Spirit, the fruit, Jesus, Jesus' character, Jesus' nature. 
John 14, 6 says that Jesus saith unto, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's Jesus. Jesus is the way to minister, to love on people, to share the gospel. He's the truth. And he's the life. There's only the life to live. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's look at John 14, 13 to 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I wanted to touch on this scripture for a second here too. The Holy Spirit is the one to teach you to pray to God. You pray in the will of God. You pray for God's glory. He's talking to his disciples right here. He's letting them know he's leaving. And he's giving them like uh, authority right here. He's telling them go out and then whatever you need, whatever you ask for in my name. The teacher, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the helper, the healer, the power in our walk with God can teach you how to pray. The cross is a part of the greater works. The Holy Spirit is the power to do the greater works. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we will do the greater works. We just got to step back and let the Holy Spirit do what he does. He's very experienced. So again, in John 14, it says, 13, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. And this is the Amplified. As my representative. So are you praying as a representative of Jesus, the kingdom of God? This I will do, it says, so that my father may be glorified. And celebrated in the sun. If you ask me anything in my name as my representative, I'll do it. I will do it. Acting as Jesus' representative means that the person calling on his name is in a close relationship with him and he wants the same things Jesus wants. That's all I have to say about that. God be glorified. Daily in your walk, be led by the Holy Spirit. I wanted to jump on, uh, thank you, Lord, on the blessing, um, the oil in the name of Jesus, and anointing your home. Um, I wanted to touch bases on cursed objects. Uh, I'll read something real quick. It says, uh, house cleansing. Um, a lot of people ask this question, and I would say uh, I, I looked into it before I met everybody in the Zoom room, and I just I do it in faith. So when when I get some oil, like I have oil. I usually have some right here. Uh, see, here's some right here. Get some oil, olive oil. I pray over it. You know, I thank God for it. And I ask God uh, to bless it. I pray over the oil in the name of Jesus, that the Lord God will sanctify it in the name of Jesus. And I bless it. I pray over it. You know, nothing really crazy. As, you know, it don't have to be a long prayer. You just bless it and believe it's blessed. Uh, this, there's a scripture here, too, that I had written down. It says, and ye shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it. And you shall hollow it and all its utensils and it shall be holy. Exodus 4, 49, 49. So what I would say is um, once you got the anointed oil, you go to the, you go, this is what I do. And it might sound a little crazy, but I'll open the door. Or crack a window. If you're in the freezing snow, you just crack the door. And I'll anoint, anoint every single door 
Just put, I don't want to put a cross or anything. I just put an anointing oil. You can't put a cross, however you let. But I put anointing oil on every door. Anointing oil on every window. Anointing oil on the vents, on the fireplace. Anywhere you think some, someone could get in because the spirit can get in. So any access to the house, you anoint it. And then you declare every room, every part of that house sanctified. You declare that's the room where the spirit of the Lord dwells. That's the room. This belongs to Christ. This belongs to the Lord God Almighty. And you declare every room, the Lord's room. And then that door that you left open, you didn't anoint it yet. I mean, you can, but I just, I don't until it's time to clean house. I tell every spirit in every room to get out of my house in the name of Jesus. You don't belong here. I even call on the angels of the Lord. To clean house in Jesus' name. And then I believe that they go. And then I go anoint that last door. I tell them, don't you ever come back. So I wanted to touch bases on that. I pray that blesses you. And also, too, you can message us. You can message us at deliveranceministry.com.au. And we have done a, a house cleansings on the Zoom and um, we'll do it again. I mean, it was such an anointed event last time we did it. Um, amen. So cursed objects. So if you have a cursed object, you want to get rid of it. Um, Deuteronomy 7, 25, 26 says, The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither thou shalt bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be cursed, be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. So a lot of people, um, and a lot of people ask about cursed objects. You know, um, I do. I do believe there there may be a list that we we have. I'm not too sure. We'll, we'll probably get one, but you know, be led by the Spirit because I'll tell you in my experience, um, when I first came to the Lord, I had a lot of uh, uh, Catholic stuff mixed with Christian stuff all over my house, and as I started walking and reading the Bible and praying for people, and I started start living my life for the Lord, He started highlighting certain things. And when the Lord highlights something, he like speaks to you. Like you'll, you'll see, it'll stand out. So it first started where there was like, uh, I, I used to have a, cat, a Catholic cross in every room. I used to have them in my cars, every car, my whole life. I thought I was protected because of it. So the Lord started highlighting those crosses. So those I got rid of right away. But then um, the Sacred Heart Jesus was in my house, you know, um, and the Lord was like saying, that's not, you know, that, that's, that's not me, basically. And so I, I got rid of those. So it's just other things. One time the Lord had led me because uh, a relative had gave me, uh, he was uh, into Native American you know, lifestyle. And uh, he had made a special, what he said, I didn't know at the time, a special necklace for me with beads, Native American and everything. And I had put up a poster. I had it on the door. I didn't ever wear it, but I had it on the door for years. And I had to actually put a poster over it. And I didn't even know it was there. But the Lord kept having me um, staring at that poster for some reason. I'm like, what? So I just, why do you keep highlighting this, Lord? And then I kind of looked behind the poster, and it was that Native American necklace. And the Holy Spirit, get it out. So I got rid of it, you know? Um, one time, um, I'm just giving you examples of how I learned myself. One time I, um, right sitting at my desk and there was a Bible being highlighted, two Bibles, actually two different times. One of them was a Bible. The Lord kept having me, it was highlighted. It was like, it was like what's going on with that gray Bible? Come to find out it was a Jehovah's Witness Bible. The Lord didn't want it in my house. Not saying it was causing problems, but the Lord highlighted it. Then I found another Bible. Um, it, it, was, it was a version the Lord kept highlighting. So I got rid of it. So certain things the Lord will, will highlight. The Holy Spirit, you have a relationship with him. He'll tell you what don't belong. 
there's one thing I want to add. Uh, I got rid of everything that I, I, I could in the past four years. But there's um, an object in my house that, um, that it was a gift from, from my wife, and she, she don't want it gone. It's, it's a big statue of an angel. So I was like, well, I don't want that. I don't want it in here. And she goes, well, it's mine. And I'm like, okay, what could I do? So what did I do? It's the same as I anoint my house with oil. I go to that thing and I anoint it with oil and I say, any curse on this, I break that curse in the name of Jesus. And I just prayed over it. Prayed the blood of Jesus over it. Amen. Let's see here. Um, Anything that is cursed, and you, if you can burn it, burn it. But I just, I just got rid of it in the trash. Honestly, I'd rather have burned it. But we can't burn out here all the time. You know, I covered that. Sometimes you live with people. Sometimes you have someone. You have a. You don't want division or arguing over an item in your house. Just break the curse off it in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint it with oil, and don't worry about it. Well, Amen. Hold on one second, sister. Hold on one second. I'll open up the room. I got two more slides. Okay. I'm used. I'm new to this. Okay. Yeah, I'll open up for questions and answers too. Right now, just one one more time. So, uh, one more slide. Okay. So, cursed land. All right. Uh, I was doing some studying and research on it, and uh, and I'll I'll read this prayer that you could walk on your land and take authority over it. Okay. Um, and, and it goes like this. You can walk your land and claim your land. All right. Uh, it says this prayer may be declared at any site where there is a, a historical marker or any known violence or any murders or any involvement in bloodshed or any, any, um, you know, abominations to the Lord, basically. It says, Father, according to your word and in obedience to your word, I come boldly before you to the courtroom of heaven, Hebrews 4, 16. I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through the bloodshed. Now you're walking your property. You're claiming your property, okay? Through the bloodshed of Jesus Christ, the property of the body of Jesus and the mind of Jesus, which you gave so freely according to your word and in the obedience to your word, I renounce the sins, inequities, and the hidden words of darkness, all the way back to the first thought, word, deed, and gesture, and to as many generations back as needs be. I renounce the corruption, alphetesis, curses, satanic ritualistic expressions that have defiled this ground. I render them void of power and expression from this time forth. I remit these sins even unto the descendants of those generations that are alive. To this day, I remit their sins and send uh, your goodness and laborers to finish the work of redemption, healing, and reconciliation. I ask you, Father, to cleanse this ground and release it from the blood guiltiness. I ask you to return its purity and bring it back from under the curse and its groanings. And say to you, Earth, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be free from the innocent blood and all records and transgressions against you come back and be restored into life and fruitfulness so that you may be a blessing as you were meant to be i release you earth and call back life and health and peace and lift off any yoke of condemnation from the animals birds and humans from the ground all the way to, to heaven so that the father can bless now you have begun redeeming the people of the land Back to the Father who created it all, but more importantly, your personal response and awareness to the Father has been enriched, thus preparing us uh, as the glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle and washed in the blood of Jesus. So that's just a, a basic uh, prayer that you could say. I would say, uh, look these up, study these yourself. Um, uh, you can always ask and we could share this one. Um, it's just, you know, you got to take authority over your land. You got to believe that you have dominion. You got to believe in the words of the Lord that you, you are an ambassador and you take authority and you break the curses. Amen.
and that's uh that's all I got to say. We can open up for questions and stuff. And uh, I love you all and God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord Jesus, uh, to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Awesome, Reggie. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Reggie, can you send me that? You got that prayer typed up? Yeah. Yeah. Could you send me that? We'll put it on Pete's website, if that's okay with Peter. I think we could actually add to that because that was just a little sample. Um, like, you know, that's just. Yeah. A... Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, no, add to it, whatever. That's good. So someone had a question? Well, they did, but they um, ran away. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, you know, have one more slide left. <laughs> Do your slide. It makes play in the middle of teaching, isn't it? But they can did watch. Anita, did she leave already? Is that what he's saying? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Praise God. Oh, her question was, um, was it was private. We're still recording. I don't know. She was going to ask, right? Yeah, she was going. Oh well, I think she wanted to, but no one could explain. Okay, in so the middle she, of, a, of a teaching, you know. So there was a question of I found gypsy cards and book in my adult daughter's things, and she is living with me. Throw out and prayed. Well, this don't want to cause division. I think I covered that, you know. So, thank you, Lord. Amen. I have a. I have a question, Reggie. Amen. Okay. Um, if you are a husband or, or wife and, uh, you know, you see an object as being cursed, but it's, you know, really an awesome object to the spouse. Say, say, uh, say your wife's great grandma gave her, uh, I don't know, a statue of Buddha. We'll just throw that out there. And you're like, oh, I don't want that in my house. It's creepy. It's cursed. Whatever. How do you deal with that as being the other spouse? I would say the same way I dealt with that big statue angel. Um, I, I didn't want it in my house, but uh, it was her. It was from her grandma, so I prayed over it. The Buddha, um, I don't know. It kind of felt like just being a little funny. I'd put a blanket over it and a flower on it, and then anoint it and pray over it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't. I, hey, I don't, are you telling me you wouldn't? <laughs> You wouldn't leave a food offering or? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no. Well, I'll tell you what. Hey, what if it's some kind of jewelry, an heirloom, and, you know, it belongs to, you know, let's say your wife and it's cursed. Just pray over it. And that's just about it also. Yeah, pray over it. Like that, 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 that house. Um... A land prayer too that's a per pretty powerful thing but there's a couple of other the same person who wrote that he had wrote another one and it talked about hexes and vexes and curses and all the things that we renounce mm. deliverance. add that to that one and then it's right over that item it's no longer you know what i mean that okay. i think that i believe you know yeah Someone has a better answer for that mm. i think that's the key reg isn't it you believe and you don't doubt and have fear about it anymore yeah yeah. Ever see that movie where what was that one of Jumanji? And that thing was going boom, 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 and making music. I mean, that you throw it out, man. You know, if things making music and doing all that stuff, get rid of it. You know. <laughs> uh, but uh, sometimes more obvious. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if it's flying across the room, get it out. But if you're going to cause an argument and division, it's best just to break the curse. I believe we have dominion. We have dominion, you know? Amen. That's right. And I dealt with this a lot. Um, you know, when I came out of witchcraft, my whole house was full of all these wonderful things, and they weren't always mine. Some of them belonged to my husband. Some of them belonged to... Uh, 
other people, you know, because we still had a roommate um, in and out sometimes, you know, and uh, you can't just go over and chuck somebody's item out. They're going to get mad. They're going to get offended, you know. I actually had that happen to me, and uh, long story short, I went to bed for work. I woke up four hours later to find people burned one of my posts. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think somebody in here might remember that, but uh, yeah. it really happened, you know, and I woke up like, what? <laughs> you know, so it is what it is. They burn what? I think I know that one, Tracy. Yes, you do. But see, whether it was a <laughs> Well, whether it was a cursed item or not, the irrelevant, you know, it's like, dude, did you guys have to do that while I was sleeping? Come on, yeah, you know, no, that, so. Not cursed, all right, that was blessed. It's just the enemy didn't Amen. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, praise God, you know, you wouldn't like it if you came in and, you know, your husband or wife threw away your, I don't know, cross or whatever, your best Bible, you know, or something, that'd be weird, you know. Mm. Anybody have any questions about the the word for the day? Anything like that? Did I cover it all right? House blessing? Any questions on house blessing? That was pretty, you know, it's all pretty simple to me. Hey, I got one more, Reggie. And uh, this is something that I learned from not so long ago, about a year, is that when you go into a house and you're praying. Ask, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal if there's anything in the walls. Because, like I said, when I went into one and there was a cross inside the, between the, the frame and it was upside down and it was dripping red with paint like blood. There was, like I said, I had to take it outside, break it, break the curse, burn it. And then went back out inside again and just started, you know, uh, anointing the house again. Mm. You know, yeah. And, and Nader's back, by the way, Reggie. Okay. Sorry, yeah, Ryan and Anita, are you back? Yeah. Amen, brother Raymond. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share an experience with about anointing the house. Well, actually, I anointed my porch. Um, and I, I feed the homeless. So I'll, I'll go on my porch and I'll see donations from neighbors and stuff like that, people in town. And I got really, um, Anita, if you have a question, just go ahead and talk. I got really kind of like bummed out because there was there. I. I like to get to receive the donations. I don't want to deny anybody a blessing, but I like to pray for people. You know, y'all know me. I love to pray for people, you know, especially new people. You know, not that I won't pray for an old friend, but man, the new person. Hi, how you doing? Let me share Jesus with you. And I really like that. And so I was telling the Lord, Lord, um, there's four, four donations. You know, I don't know, three people come here and didn't get a prayer, you know, and, and he was telling me, uh, anoint your porch then and pray health and healing and blessings on your porch and i was like well all right so i just listened got my anointed oil it went out and and put i actually put crosses i put oil and crosses you know this is this is over two years ago put anointed crosses on all the posts on my porch and all in the door and i was like all right and then i dedicated this to porch to the lord Right now, anybody who comes on this porch will feel the presence of the Lord God because he dwells here in Jesus' name. Amen. And then I left. Do you think I can do the same thing with our streets, Reggie? Yeah, well, you can pray that cursed lamp thing on the streets everywhere, you know. Yeah. But even blessings on the streets and um, anointing on the streets around you. Yeah, and cars too. I just did a car yesterday or day before yesterday. Yeah. I do motor motorcycle blessings a lot too when I see motorcycle drivers do the same thing. Um, but I so I anointed the porch. It was just me and the Lord. I, I didn't even tell my wife. I just mean the Lord. Everybody was gone. I did it by myself with the Lord. And then months later, a brother calls me up 
And he goes, hey, Ridge, I had a dream about your porch. And he's never seen my house. And he goes, your porch has like crosses all over it. And it's anointed. <laughs> and I was like, what? So that was confirmation that, and it, it built my faith. Like, you, you know, I'm telling you, it built my faith up. So. Uh, Reggie, what, what do you think about um, Native American, well, it's like beaded kind of bracelet or, or necklaces, not necessarily made by Native Americans, but in that style? That sounds like the one that I had um, on my wall for a long time, and I, and I totally forgot it was there. Like I said, I put a poster on it. It was beaded. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of necklaces coming out. Um, that, uh, that you know they're cursed. Um, all these weird symbols, you know what I mean? And they're giving them out free on the internet. Oh yeah, fill this form out, send your email, I'll give you a nice necklace. We've had a necklace delivered to this house one day and I go, I told my wife, I go, what is this? It was actually an ankle bracelet delivered for a free thing. And it had a hand with Illuminati eye in it for her ankle. And I was uh -oh. like- Uh-oh, the Hamza, the Hamza. Get that out of here. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, whoa. And then um, we had, a, I don't know if it's still there. I took it off. Maybe she snuck it up there. Um, she had got all these infinity necklaces. And there was an infinity behind there. And, I, and I, I was getting highlighted by the Lord about the infinity thing. And it looked nice, you know. And, uh, and then I was like, why do you keep telling me about that, Lord? So I looked it up. And it's actually one of them symbols that they're not of God. So... Just pray about it. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Go ahead, Duncan. Uh, Good eye, Reggie. Um, just something I'm thinking about, a bit of an analogy. Um, when I first got married, I wasn't a Christian. My wife was. And for the first 10 years, I wasn't a Christian. And I guess I worshipped the world. And um, I'm sure I was cursed in a number of ways. And I'm glad she didn't throw me out and um, instead prayed over me and anointed me. So just something to think about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, annoying people all the time too. Yeah. Uh, not all the time. You got to be led by the Spirit. There's times I'll walk out the door, and the Lord won't even tell me put the anointing oil in my pocket. But there's sometimes He'll say, "Grab it." I'm like, "All right." Yeah. And then later on that day, I'll, I'll anoint somebody with oil and pray over them. Already? Yeah. The I work in a museum, and most of the stuff is is demonic the whole exhibit is it's like um on like female sexuality this and that whatever so what are you doing that case um well what what i would do is it's like if i'm going to walmart mm -hmm. right be the not it doesn't always happen all the time but if i go to the store if i go somewhere i'll ask the angels of the lord to go ahead of me and search the place and get and clean it out, and then I'll um, I'll pray uh, blessings on the, the the store. I ask that the Lord would um, be present in that store, and that way, when I go to that store to do His work to pray for people, um, because we do all things in the, for the glory of God. Even shop, you know, even go talk to people or buy fruit. Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll pray. So it would be like your workplace. You know, we go in there, you believe there's some cursed objects, just ask the Lord to go clean it out, pray over it before you get there, and trust the Lord that you are under his protection. I was, I was praying that uh, the Holy Spirit would fill the place with his warrior angels and ministry angels, and the presence of God would be there. That's what I was praying. Amen. And also, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, leaders, you're just welcome to answer these. I don't have all the answers. I just trust the Lord to tell me. <laughs> You've got a couple of questions. Hands up there. You're not paying, you're not paying attention there. <laughs> yeah, I got one in privately too. Um, someone's saying, can you explain more on the Catholic cross and do we anoint with oil and do we anoint with oil with the sign of the cross? If you can get rid of the Catholic cr cross, I guess you would have to do that. You know, because, you know, this is a good thing to say because we do deliverance on people and they're like, oh, my mom's a Catholic and the whole house is full of Catholic items everywhere. 
You know, um, your room doesn't have to be that way. Your room is your room. You dedicate your room to the Lord, your prayer over the room. And even when they're gone, pray over the whole house, you know. And uh, don't let the other residents in the house stuff bother you, you know. We can't live in fear. Tracy, do you have a question? Well, thank you, Steve. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> hey, Reggie's pulling a Peter on me. Don't you pull no Peter on me. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do have a question. Or, well, I have a testimony and a question. I was going to, um, <clears throat> it's kind of what Lynn was saying. Okay, so uh, say that you're staying the night. Say you're traveling and uh, say brother-in-law offers you a place to stay. Hey, you stay at my house. You get there, he's an unbeliever. You get in there to find out, oh boy, <laughs> it's bad in here, right? Um, say he's a witch and there's just all this demonic stuff, okay? So how do you handle that? Um, it depends on your faith, I guess. If it really, really bothers you that bad, get out of there. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I'll give you my testimony. I stay at my mom and dad's. Uh, actually, I'm going to go stay there Wednesday night for Thanksgiving because I wake up and I cook all the food and stuff. Um, my dad's not a believer. Uh, the room, the guest room I stay in has a, a picture of Leviathan above the bed. There's dragons, uh, grim reapers, you name it. It's in there, you know. Uh, he's not a believer. He just likes that stuff. Half-naked women, I mean, <laughs> you know. And I'll tell you guys, um, the Lord knows your heart. It's a heart thing. And when I come in there and I bind it, you know, I don't do 10 minutes. I just say, Lord, I'm forbidding transference of ungodly spirits one to another. And I plead the blood over myself. That's it. I don't have to keep binding, loosening every time. Every time I see something, man, I'd be talking all day, you know. Yeah. And uh, I have peace. I sleep in there fine. The only thing that woke me up one time was a neighbor's dog barking, and well, it's a dog. But um, if you can have peace, have it. There's nothing that's going to happen. I'm not going to wake up with demons, with Leviathan or whatever. You know, um, and I just, the Lord knows I'm not in agreement with it. These are not my items. <laughs> Same thing with your home. If somebody, uh, spouse, roommate, somebody, we prayed for a girl uh, today, I think, that had two roommates and, you know, thought one of them was a witch. What does she do? I mean, she can't just legally throw her roommate out. So the Lord knows your heart. Um, be at peace if you can. If you can't find peace, get out of there <laughs> if you can. You know, but um, rest assured, like I said, a, a whole pile of demons are not going to come in through some item that's not yours. Now, if it's your item, it's a little bit different. <clears throat> so that was my question. What do we do? What would you do, Reggie? I'll give this to you. Uh, I just gave you my testimony. What would you do? You're driving out of town. And like I said, distant family members said, hey, you can stay here. And uh, you get in there and it's infested. <laughs> How would you handle that? Yeah, I carry the, the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe exactly everything you said. Um, I would hope and pray. For, let me tell you. Ooh, God, that's good, Lord. I would hope and pray that I could reach them. Okay, this is an example. Um, I don't know if I knew you guys already. So it could be two years. It could be one. Oh, it has to be over a year. So it could be two years. Uh, a relative passed away they were masons there she, she was a mason and um we were going to a masonic um temple for the um what's it called celebration of life they called it and i we i didn't know i didn't know the address was a masonic temple until we pulled up in front of it and i looked and i was like we're not going in there I want taking my kids in there. And then my wife said, uh, yeah, we are. We love them. And I go, that's a Masonic temple. I didn't know she was a Mason. And uh, and so we, we ended up going. And I just prayed. I prayed. In fact, I went in there and blessed the food in the name of Jesus for 100 people. It didn't matter to me. Um, but, yeah, they did the, um, they did the, the girls, um, which I called. The Masonic girls, they did the dance. They were inviting everybody to come down and dance that ritual dance. Uh, it was crazy. Um, but I just, uh, 
I believe the Lord was with us, and I trusted the Lord. I prayed the blood of Jesus over my family, over my children. And I told my wife, hey, don't do that dance, please. Uh, I just sit back and show the love for the family. You know, not everybody was a Mason. The whole family was there. My whole family was there. And uh, so that was that was pretty a, a educational experience, and the Lord got me through it. Uh, Reggie, okay. With the workplace thing, would you say something like angels attack any demons that are in this place and remove them, or because the workplace you can't really do something like that? Say that again. Okay. With the workplace, since there's so many, the 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 the, the exhibit is demonic. It's like <laughs> female sexuality, everything like uh, I don't. Know, it's all sexuality and stuff like that. Um, so would you say angels attack the demons that are in this place and remove them, or you couldn't be able to do that because it's a workplace, it's not your place? Yeah. You're there, but I mean, like, as I'm wondering that. Yeah, um, yeah, you're under the protection of the Lord, sister. Mm -hmm. You're under the protection of the Lord. You know, don't do your job, get in and out, represent Jesus while you're there. Yeah. Pray. Uh, I think I think one of the best ways to do it, Reggie, is um, you know because there is arguments about whether we can command angels and do all that. You know, um, you know the way I usually do it is just ask the Father. You know, Father, I ask some angels to minister to these people for a hedge of protection, wall of fire, and to uh, help the situation here, or something like that. And then you've put it all into God's hand. You've given Him your faith. And then he'll answer it, and, and it, it, it'll give you a more peace of mind that, that it's God's will as well, you know? That's right. Yeah. Amen, I agree. Hey, it's Marilyn, and, and I had something with that. You know, before I go somewhere, if I'm going to go to the hospital or if I'm praying with my daughter before she goes to work or whatever case that is, I ask the Lord for sufficient angels according to his will to fill that place up. And, and so I've asked the Lord according to his will. So I drive by the school every morning to take my daughter to Christian school. I ask the Lord, I think, well, now I just thank the Lord for the angels that he has stationed there because I do it every morning. I know they're already there. I just praise the Lord for that because I know he has angels stationed there because, because they're there. So I don't always want to ask the angels to go into warring if they don't need to. Yeah. Yeah, just That's wisdom. I mean, yeah. You can loose the angels. It's not really commanding them, is it? It's like you, you can loose some angels, and if they if they're loose, they're loose. If they're not, they're not. It's um, it's really just a matter of faith, like Reggie was saying, and trace what's in your heart. You know what you believe. There's two different scenarios too. Um, <clears throat> really quick with cursed objects. Um, uh, unfortunately, I know a lot about this because I came out of that, but there's two types of cursed objects. There's a charged item, which can be anything. It could be a, a, a coffee mug, okay? If, uh, if somebody curses it, you know, um, it could be anything. I mean, they can get your hairbrush, you know, that's why we have to be led by the spirit. So. Um, a charged item can be anything. Now that you can just break the curse off it and it's fine. If you ever went to a garage sale and all of a sudden you have this real creepy feeling, you're like, hmm, <laughs> and you just uh, turn around, you know, I, I usually put stuff in the back of my car and it's very rare, but every once in a while I get this kind of hmm feeling, you know, or like Reggie said, the Lord will highlight it. And I'll just say, well, Father, I just break any curses, anything, hexes, vexes, hoodoo, voodoo, witchcraft, anything over these items in the name of Jesus. And I command any spirit behind it to go immediately in Jesus' name. It's done. I don't have to name the item. I don't have to put my hands on it. You know, just real simply. So if something is charged, it's gone. So that's one kind of curse. The other kind of curse is a cursed object, period. A pentagram. You could pray till the cows come home. You are not going to break the curse over a pentagram. It's Satan's item. <laughs> a dragon. I mean, anything that is uh, demonic. So what you're saying, uh, Lynn, I hope this clarifies. You can bind the demons, whatever. 
but if it belongs to uh, Satan, that's his item. He's not going anywhere. It's a cursed object. That's why we have to destroy it. See what I mean? Like witchcraft book. Dude, you're not going to break the curse off of a witchcraft book. It's a witchcraft book or a Ouija board. Same thing. That that demon's not going anywhere. It has a right no matter what because it's a Ouija board. Now, if there's a demon attached to, say, a, a book, a science book, just a text science textbook, you could break the curse over that and, it, you know, definitely the demon has to go because that's just a normal item. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, just to train her, I had to protection and then just bind any demon from attacking me because I have authority over it. Because I can't. Amen. Because it's, it's, it's the workplace, so it's not my area anyway. It's their museum. So, yeah. Amen, sister. Willie's yeah, Will got just, a question too, Reggie, when you're ready. Yeah, uh, well, I just wanted to share with you, Lynn, um, when you were first talking about that place, uh, the Lord kind of showed me that there was. I could see like the legs of a of a large angel standing over you at work. So don't worry. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> Will, brother Will, you have a question? Sorry. No problem. Uh how, how you all doing? Pretty good. Um hi Trace. Uh Reggie, I whether it's to you or anybody else who has a, a good answer, I'm, I'm just open to it. Um, it, it. It's in the beginning of what you were teaching. You were mentioning about, you know, these 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 signs shall follow those that believe in my name. You shall. You also uh, went to the scripture where it says that uh, not only these signs that I do, uh, greater signs will you do than these. And. Um, one more thing on top of that would be that uh, the question I'm about to ask you, I can't even call him a brother according to the word, uh, but he calls himself a pastor, but that does not believe in the rest of the fivefold ministry. So my question is this. I have been going back and forth uh, to two different churches, and um from those two different churches, I actually know people for 30 years. I haven't seen most of them in over a decade. Uh, and uh, the two churches, the people that are in there are friends from a home group like we had, like that this exists on, on the internet, except they all meet in the home group. And uh, the atmosphere is definitely, uh, I'd say, gotten lukewarm to cold, uh, just from my opinion. And uh, the one church that I was going to, um, I found out that this I, this person, the Lord, I can't call him a brother. I'm not allowed to call him a brother. I'm not allowed to call him a pastor. You take in, you take in the scripture and saying it doesn't exist. So my question is this, is that um, I have other brothers and sisters that have seen me in the church. Uh, I, I attended the church for a while. And um, uh, I was asked to pray for a guy who was on dialysis, who's the backbone of the church. And I don't say this to puff up my anything or blow smoke because I don't do that. But, you know, I'm young enough. And there was a man in the hospital and needed a kidney. I said, I'm going to go have my blood tested. God gave me two and I'll offer mine. In the same service, it was a man who's always been on his, his, uh, his cell phone. I'd always look at them, be like to myself, I'd be like, why are people on their cell phones at church? And the Lord said to me, don't judge them. Don't judge them. And he had done this several Sundays, to make a long story short. And the last Sunday that I was at this church, the man was crying into the cell phone. He had a big bandana on him. He was MS, X, MS 13 from what I could tell. He went to the back. He was crying on his cell phone. I just went and hugged him. said, I'm your brother, Will. And uh, I'm here for your brother. Just want to give you a hug. Don't know what's going on in your life, but I'm here, and we're brothers. And uh, he told me his name. And uh, the pastor had been saying for weeks, we're praying for for Sister Josie. Long story short, Sister Josie was in the hospital. So was the man who was the backbone of the church who needed a kidney. And Josie passed away, and that was her brother Sal inside the church texting hundreds and hundreds of people 
Catholics. It was an Italian, big Italian family. And I didn't even know that this was the man that the pastor was talking about. So, uh, and then, then the older man comes in. This is two different people all at the same time. Tubes are coming out from his sleeve. And he shows them to me and he grabs me by the hand. The guy had to be 75, 80, taller than me. I'm just about six foot three. And he starts singing Amazing Grace. It's so beautiful. He grabbed my hand. Now, that pastor knew that that was the man I, I, I offered my kidney to. I had my blood tested to see if I could give it to him. And the other guy is the sister that we've been praying for. She, she died. She died. The pastor asked me to go to the morning service. I was the only guy there. I hadn't showered in four days. Same clothes. Uh, just my situation on crutches. And uh, he denied everything about the power of the Lord. And I tell you all those things because now there's people in the church saying, well, you came to the funeral home. And, you know, here you are. You're trying, you know, you're trying to. You're a new person in the church loving on everybody. How come you're not coming anymore? And I don't know what to say to them because a lot of them are new believers on milk. Now, if I say to them, well, the, past, the pastor's doctrine is such and such, that puts it in a position where I don't want to cause them to backslide and go no place and be accused of causing division. And then on the other hand, if I don't, if I don't say anything, Reggie, I feel like, you know, I'm a watchman, I see wrong, and their, blood's, their blood is on my hands. Uh, that was my question. Thank you. Uh, I would never tell you to lie. Um, a lot of people were, um, the truth sets them free. So I would say the truth is always the best way to go about it. You know, we will be persecuted. Anybody want to input on that for Brother Will? I have another question after this one. Uh, someone else has been asking me privately. Any, anyone want to add? Did that help you, Brother Will? Just tell the truth. Yeah, well, that's about all you can do in it, Reggie. You just tell uh, it the truth. Does, it, does, it does not, Reggie, and I don't mean it to be rude. It doesn't, it does not help me because I feel like if I go to the left, I'm wrong. And if I go to the right, I'm wrong. You know what I mean? I mean, I could sit there and, and try to guide and teach the, the, the brothers and sisters that are asking me. At the same time, this, this group is a very tightly knit group in, in my area. So I'm going to be ostracized. So it's either I isolate myself away from those churches that aren't preaching what they should be. And it's really simple in the word. It's not, you know, they're the basics of the doctrines of the word. Somebody has, I think they want to answer for you, Will. I want to help you with an answer. Thank you. you know, I was just going to say, um, do you feel led by the Holy Spirit to be, to stay there and to um, tell people? Or do you feel led that you should be out of there? Uh, what what happened was uh, the pe the person who calls himself a pastor there he literally he prints up flyers and no no but I'm not I'm not talking about what his opinion is I'm asking you what what do you think the Holy Spirit is leading you to do because you know we obviously we can't go and go against the pastor because he has authority in that church so. Well, what I'm going to say to you, Brother Peter, is that he said to me, uh, he goes, because he loves to debate. That's what he does for a living. He's got to win and he debates. And mm -hmm. so he decided to challenge me on just the basic simplicities of the word. And so he basically said to me, I don't want to see from you or hear from you again until you basically didn't say these words. But I know what he meant. I come bowing down to his feet and I repent to him. Abusing his authority, and and this was through a text. I didn't even want to text him, but he wanted to go that way. So he's told me not not to come back because I guess I don't know. He's offended, and at the same time, he doesn't want me to say anything to scare away any more sheep that he's already scared away. Yeah, well, I think I think you really need to listen to the Lord, you know. And um, you know, if he's asking you not to come back. Um, you really seriously need to ask the Lord what 
what do you want me to do, Lord? Because um, if it's just faction, the Holy Spirit can't work through that anyway, if it's argument. So, I mean, that doesn't stop you talking to people outside the church if you run into them or, or whatnot. Okay. As long as you're not causing contention, you know, that's what... No, that's I don't want the main to. Thing, that's the main thing the devil wants is for us to begin walking in contention. So in whatever you do, you have to make sure you're not um, causing contention um, and you're, you're just walking in love. And the Lord, you know, I think the Lord would lead anyone to you that will receive the truth and, and you can gently give them the truth, you know, but you can't go into that church um, you know, pushing your agenda when you, when, um, even if it's true sometimes, unless you're getting led by the Holy Spirit to, to, um, to speak up and be like that, um, on the wall type of prophet type of thing, you know? I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. We've got two more questions. Uh, um, one question is, hi, Reggie, I missed the balcony story. Do we anoint with oil with the sign of the cross? With a question mark. Not sure if you answered that. And what's the difference between a normal cross and a Catholic cross? Just need further clarification. So, you know, that when I anointed the porch, I was just hearing the Lord. I didn't know what I was doing. I just, I never anointed a porch before. You know, I've done cars and horses. I gotta see grandma. Yeah, I see. Come on. And um, so why I put the crosses there, uh, I just heard to do it. And I think it was probably because the Lord can show somebody a vision of the porch later on and tell me they saw crosses there. Maybe that was the Lord's plan the whole time for me to build my faith up in anointing, you know, anointing uh, houses and stuff like that. You don't have to you do a cross. Um, I anoint my windows and doors. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll tell people to do a cross as I, as I hear. I'll sometimes just drop some oil on it. Um, sometimes when I anoint people's foreheads, when I pray for them, I'll do a cross. And sometimes I'll just put a drop on them, you know, just touch them, their forehead. Um, when I go pray, sometimes I'll hear the Lord say, anoint your hands. I don't understand why I hear these things. So I put some anointing on my hands and then I go hit the streets. It just depends on the leading of the Lord. Um, what's the difference between a normal cross and a Catholic cross? I believe the Catholic crosses, sometimes they have beads, but they definitely normally have Jesus on it, right? And Jesus is not on the cross no more. He's, 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 he's risen. He's alive. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Bernadette's hand is raised. Reg. Okay, we still got Anita. She, she's asking, so I'm going to go back real quick. Bernadette, hold on, sister. Okay. I am new here. My question is, how do I keep my house clean when I have my non-Christian daughter living with me? I threw her gypsy cards out. Um, you can bless it. You know, uh, this video will eventually go on YouTube. You can watch it and then go back. And you can also call us and we can meet on Zoom and do a house blessing with you and walk you through it. Um, can you hear me? Huh? You can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So she's living with me and she is, she's just found out she's pregnant and she's just stopped methamphetamine and alcohol but you know she's got a long way to go i'm a christian and i pray through my house all the time and i'm a spiritual i'm right into spiritual warfare so i anoint my house all the time with oil and things like that and well i've been going to my prayer shed outside and just like yesterday just the holy spirit took over and i spoke tongues like i was exhausted by the end of it so um i've been doing that and um just taking it to the cross and putting her at the cross because there's nothing I can do in the worldly sense so um yeah so just praying through the house and just anointing the rooms do you think yeah. I'm doing enough <laughs> yeah but trust um you don't, you don't want to be in panic all the time but you know it's not only that anointing the house there's there's sometimes you know 
I don't do like an anointing every month and stuff like that, or every two weeks I, I anoint the house. And then, but I do like, um, uh, it's, let me see here. Sometimes you feel a presence that's not of God in your house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you just say, I oh, right. it's, it's like first. a highlight, the Lord will highlight, like you'll, you'll feel something that's not of God. You're like, all right, maybe something's in here that don't belong. So I say, mm -hmm. get out of my house now in Jesus' name. And I, I, again, yeah, right. I, I always call on the angels of the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. he assigns us angels. So I say, angels, sweep, do a sweep of the house in the name of Jesus. And I thank the Lord that, that the angels are sweeping my house. Um, so if you're worried about it being continually messed up uh let the holy spirit lead you if you feel something just tell it to go go um I'll, I'll tell you um uh my children saw something in my house i don't know a month or two or two ago they were like they're like looking at me like and i was like what, what's going on and they go and there was something in the house so i go whoa tell it to get out of here then you got the same holy spirit as me and they were like Get out of here, in Jesus name. And I, and then I, I heard the Lord say, "Open the door, tell it to go." And so I go, "Open the door." And then one of them jumped up and opened the door. And I said, "Now tell it to go," because I didn't see it; they did. That was that was the Lord opening their visual eyes. So yeah. you hear a word of knowledge, you call it out. You get a word of knowledge; it's for you to do it. So I told I was a teaching for my children right there, and they said, "Get out of our house." Yeah. And I go. Okay, now what's happening? <laughs> and they're like, it's leaving. I'm like, well, praise the Lord. Tell it they'll never come back in the name of Jesus. I'll keep doing that then. No? Thank you. Amen. Hey, I have a, I have a testimony for Anita. I don't know. The Lord's really wanting me to share this. I have a, a rebellious daughter, and I have a, a almost six-month-old grandson, and, and she just turned 18. And, you know, I, I can't be in the home all the time, but when I'm not here, she listens to to music that I don't approve of and all those mm -hmm. things. And I, I know that, that this is my house and, you know, there's angels at the four corners of the house, but about a year, year and a half ago, I was walking to my car and I was in my front yard and the, and the Holy spirit told me loose golden angels. And I loosed golden angels to my property mm -hmm. and my daughter wasn't home. But when she, like two days later, she told me, she said, mom, She's like, when I leave the house and get to the street to walk to school, this voice tells me I couldn't come to the house because of the golden angels. And I was blown away because like, I was like, Lord, because I'm like, okay, okay, Lord, golden angels. Like I just lose these golden <laughs> angels. And this was something I did not speak out loud. It was just in my mind that I was praying this on my way to work. You know, I like, I, you know, whatever, but like the, you just have to have faith that your prayer is is working. My daughter has told me she's like, "Mom, I wouldn't even be here if you didn't pray for me." And I still struggle with her. I, the struggle is not over, but you just got to keep praying and you just got to have faith and and you got to grow in that and you you got to listen to the Holy Spirit. But I don't feel like you need to anoint your house every day. I feel like your house is anointed. If if the Lord tells you to do it again, and I do a lot of things like I listen to audio Bible at night. I, I, or I listen to prayers that route out demons, or I listen to something, I leave it on YouTube, it plays all night, or, you know, for six hours or whatever, and it just, yeah. it just combats that, and, and makes me feel better, so, mm. the I Lord also, sure that. Mm. go ahead, I also make sure I, um, you know, I, I, I praise and thank God for the victory already, amen, that's right. He's under his authority. I'm under his authority. My family's under his authority. He's made me a promise. And you need to declare that out. Um, every time uh, my eyes see things getting worse, I declare it out and thank God for the victory that he's going to have over my family because I'm been a Christian for seven years, but there's been a lot of addiction and abuse and stuff through my whole family with my children and everything. So, you know, there's a lot of healing there. So, um, yeah, I just I just go into battle with it in the spirit because that's what we've been given, and you know, prayer is our weapon. And I just, um, yeah, I just have to knock it out every day and just praise God for the victory, no matter what my eyes see. But um, yeah, some days are tough, you know. Well, that's the you. truth. I've got a lot out of that. Thank you. Appreciate You're it. welcome. Praise God.
Thank you, Marilyn, for sharing. We got two uh, hands raised and I think we have how many minutes, Tracy? We're on grace. Go for it. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't know. Bernadette, did Bernadette talk already? No. Bernadette? I don't know where she's at. I'm the ear. All right. Hi, Bernadette. God bless you. Hi. You um, have a question? Um, or just, I guess, like a prayer request or just, um, I've spoke with you before, Reggie, about, you know, deliverance and everything. Um, I keep struggling. Okay. So, um, did you read the PDFs and all that stuff? Did I give them to you? Yeah, you did a few months ago when you did. And it's like some days I'll be fine, but it's become daily where I'm not okay. And just dealing with this depression and I'm not on medical leave because of it. And it's like, it's like destroying my family, you know, household. And it, so have we done deliverance on you? Yes. Okay, have you did a, a prayer call with me on the phone? Yes. And did you get deliverance or was I able to pray for you? You're able to pray. I just, I just don't, I just don't understand. But it's like, I just keep, it's like, I'll read the word like two weeks and then all of a sudden I'm not. I'm not reading anymore because I'm like, I don't have faith anymore. It's like, I just want to give up. Okay. Well, what we could do is uh, set up an appointment with you. And uh, we, uh, we're about to end this, the, the live stream right now. And uh, we're going to pray, pray out pretty soon. We got one more question. So we'll, we'll talk to you, okay? Yeah. All right. Love you, sister, and uh, God bless you in Jesus' name. I speak life over you right now, and we lose peace and a spirit of excellence to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You. I agree. Yeah, hang in there, sister. We'll pray for you. We just don't want it to be live, okay? Yeah. Uh, Rachel, sister Rachel. I've got a question. Um, <clears throat> when you said um, with your testimony about... Um, when you're cleaning house to open the doors, you know how to open the door physically. I was being told that quite a lot, actually, when you're anointing your house to open the doors so they, the spirit, the bad stuff can leave. I never understood why with that. Could you explain that? Because I always thought they could just leave anyway because they're in spirit form sort of thing. So I never understood the fact of... Um, Lots of people have told me in the past as well, and then you've commented on it, with actually physically opening the back door or window or something. So, yeah, I could never understand that. Could you explain that? I would definitely believe it's a faith thing. And when someone's in your house that's not welcome, you let them open the door and tell them to leave. And to stand by that. Um, I actually uh, did a lot of research today on the, and a lot of people have said that. When I was learning how to do this, um, I actually was praying on, because, you know, I was, I was being uh, persecuted by the local uh, ministry out here, the churches, and I didn't want to ask them uh, how to bless my house. And I found a video um, of a brother in Christ, and he did a house cleansing, and I watched it, and, I, and he says, you have authority? So I'm like, all right, then I'm doing it. And it changed everything, you know, it changed everything. Also, Just, the angels of the Lord, too. Uh, you've heard my, my testimony on that, too. Yeah. But I believe it's just like, you know, someone's in your house that don't belong. Open the door say, get out. Um, just with the non-believers that the other lady <clears throat> said, I've got a house full of non-believers. So, of course, um, things come into the house, as you would know, with non-believers. How, like, um, let's say, like, you suspect, you know, you you, you pick up that there's something in the house, but it's sort of linked to a non-believer. How do you pray about that? Like, how do you approach that in your prayers um, so that it doesn't cause havoc in the house if it's an attachment to someone else? Are you talking about an item? 
or just yeah, can the spirit? Be items, yeah, it can be items even to the person themselves. It's just um, a question I've always wondered. I've always wondered, yeah. Definitely when you pray blessings and dedicate every room to the Lord, um, that could break everything off except for what I just heard from Sister Tracy, demonic items that just got to get rid of them. Um, anybody have any input on that? Really, all you can do is just pray for protection against, I mean, if there's someone in your house that brings stuff with them, with their, or just with even their presence, and they need to be there or whatever, I mean, it's just, it's like Reggie's been saying, it's your heart, you know, if, um, we just pray to the Lord for protection and Lord, I'm not in agreement with any of this demonic agreement that they're, they're, they've got. And I'm just relying on you. You're my rear guard, Lord. So I just give it to you and thank you for protection. So and then, yeah, basically just surrendering it back for the God to yeah, fix it. Just trusting God's big enough to, um, to do it, to deal with it. Yeah. And, and because you give him that faith, he can work with that faith that you give him, you know? Can I say something? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, I saw on our spiritual warfare page, um, I listened to a um, something that Tracy put up about time and binding and how we can't, um, you know, you can't demand demons out of non-Christians because their house isn't clean, you know, we see them that will come back stronger, but we can tie and bind and I did a lot of that because I was getting frustrated with the non-Christians that I were around me and I couldn't talk to them, you know, that some spirit was sort of blinding them and deafening them. So I did a lot of um, tying and binding and covering myself in, you know, God's armor and, and stuff like that. And um, the actual book has gone missing from my house. It's actually disappeared, just gone. Um, and within two weeks, the... Um, ex that lives with me and as a flatmate he's the father of my two kids he's quite sick um he's a christian now he gave his heart to christ two days uh two weeks ago and that's and i feel that tying and binding was was almost tying and binding that strong man that was holding and blinding him from hearing what was being said so um you know i think when we have long christians in the house we need to you know just go into spiritual battle and tie and bind the strongholds in people's lives that are around us that you know so that they can be at least able to hear the word of god from us and the goodness i don't know if that makes sense to anyone but that is, i just wanted to say that yeah it does for me thank you amen ipad has her hand raised how much time we got tracy You're all right, bro. We're waiting for the donations here. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead, iPad. What's your name? Uh, it's actually my, I don't know how to do my name on it. I, it? I don't know how to change to my name. M-U-I or something? M-A-I. M-A-I. Well, hello. What's your question, yeah. sister? Uh, yeah. Just want to ask, um, you know, like about the the anointing and the demons in the house like i had a, i have a law firm and um like um because i did a criminal law or i do criminal law and what happened is that i felt like there were lots of demons and um from the cases and things like that so um uh, i think they inhabit my office downstairs and now it's really like it's vacant and um, I had a major accident four years ago. I nearly died in the accident because the demons wanted to kill me. But I wanted to um, re-inhabit that, um, that office downstairs, kind of. But um, how do I get rid of the demons? Because another um, supposedly tenant that wanted to lease out this property, which my mother owns, they built this um, refrigeration and everything, and they couldn't pay, so it's all it, the structure's still there. And so. I can't really move back in to um, operate in it as well. So, but I think it's all a spiritual thing because like I was doing, um, you know, I was working with criminals that had a really big charges like crime, le crime levels, you know? So what do I do to 
So you can actually deal with downstairs, the, the office. Yeah. I would, is it a home or a building? Um, it's a residential um, premise, yeah. Okay, it sounds like that maybe you would do a land blessing and then land go blessing. do a house blessing. And, and how do I do that piece? Just uh, anoint oil and stuff? Or get yeah. in contact with yourself? Yeah, you could... Um, well, we, we we did a teaching on that. So if you if you watch this video, you'll be able to see that. But And I'm also going to share with Tracy that house blessing prayer. I mean, that land blessing prayer. But um, you just uh, an, anoint, pray over some some oil. It could be any oil. I, yeah. I happen to use olive oil, you know. Yeah, um, yeah plenty of oil. Okay. You pray the blood of Jesus over it. I don't yeah. like to personally don't I don't like to trust um oil that that someone says it's anointed I just I pray the blood of Jesus over it myself I I pray uh that it's uh sanctified and clean and and I declare it uh, uh blessed in the name of Jesus myself and then um go around and anoint all the windows doors and vents and fireplaces and every, everywhere that uh, uh, someone could access the spirit would access and uh and declare and sanctify it in the name of jesus and then you speak you speak you, you make a declaration you say this room belongs to the lord and i command you to leave now in jesus christ's name and uh, uh if there's an open window you? say go out that open window now in jesus name you know <laughs> what did they come and attack me Cause I'm not like a, I'm not like a Peter Johnson or a Peter Whitman, you know, but if they come and strangle me when I'm doing No, it. we can do it on, we can do it with you on Zoom. Uh, you just pick a time, we'll get on Zoom. We've done it before uh, with someone's house. So wh where are you based? Are you in America? Yeah, I'm in California, but all of us are, we'll, we'll, we can meet from all over the United States and oh, cool. do a house cleansing with you. Cool. That's great. Maybe like it can be one of the Zoom Room episodes. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think it's... Not all the states, mate. <laughs> I think it's haunted um, downstairs. Yeah. Well, my house used to be haunted as well. Like there were lo like lots of toys in the room because I have a 15-year-old daughter, but she's... Yeah, she's 15 now. But when, uh, when a few years back, well, maybe six, seven, eight years back, like the toys would make noises. And then even when you have it off, they just turn on because the ghosts play with the toys. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, used, this whole building used to be a toy shop downstairs. So probably all the little ghost spirits play with the toys. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then downstairs then became like my law firm, which would deal with like a heavy duty crime, you know, people, prisoners. And so um, it, it is haunted, I think. Yeah. It's so haunted, it's not funny. It looks like really um, barren and haunted now. Yeah. So. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I, yes, I can't, sir. I can't. Something's happening on my computer. Um, it turned all white. Zoom is not responding. I can hear you. You're all good to have some of those prayers, Reggie. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I bless this computer in the name of Jesus. You know what? You can pray over your technology too, because the enemy. Can yeah, use I know. Yeah, that. they used to go on my computers and printers and pray stuff, the blood of Jesus. and then so I bind them, Jesus. and then then they stop. Yeah. I hey guys, I, that. go ahead. I got. I'm sorry, guys. I got to cut this. Um, did you guys put Peter to sleep, or is he still up? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm still here. I'm still. I was in the background listening. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, hey, I, I got to cut this live okay. stream. Like you didn't say bad things about Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's pray us out. Uh, I like I'm used to that. I got, I got. <laughs> hey, pray us out. I'm going to turn my computer off and on. Come on, Pete. Yes. Pray us out. Okay, Father, we just thank you right now for this uh, teaching, Lord. We just ask you to anoint the live, the live stream and the uh, downloads. Father, we just ask you to uh, bring enlightenment to the hearers, Lord, that the spiritual eyes and their spiritual ears be open, 
And Lord, that you bring everything that is uh, done in secret into the light. And Lord, give revelation, Lord, as to exactly um, what the people need to hear concerning anything that they may have, particularly in their homes or in their lives, even pictures on their phones, Lord, that can open uh, portals. And uh, Lord, we just ask you, Father God, to give them revelation as to what to do and close these uh and we'll get rid of these uh, cursed objects. We thank you for the teaching. We give you the praise and the glory. And we thank you, Father God, that you be lifted up. Because it's all about you in Jesus' name. We thank you. We glorify you. And we pray that this teaching, this word, lift you up. That, uh, and draw all people to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you.